Okay, you, you've heard me talk about this many times. Um, fear. I don't believe we're supposed to be fearful about anything. Uh, we're supposed to have reverence for the Lord, no fear of man. But fear is a powerful, motivating force. Now, there are many things that motivate us in life, but fear is really at the top of the list. And I think that's actually manifesting itself in the way people are responding to some of these mandates, responding to uh, the vaccine, responding to the coronavirus. And it's, quite frankly to me, it's disturbing because people can be manipulated when they are filled with fear. Joining me now to talk more about this is uh, a good friend, Scott Rasmussen. He is the founder of scottrasmussen.com, Ballotpedia, editor-at-large. Uh, he's got his finger on the pulse of America. Scott, welcome back to Washington Watch. Tony, it's always great to be with you. Hey, uh, you did a poll a couple of days ago that really grabbed my attention, and it speaks to this issue of fear, I believe. And that is that Democrats see Trump supporters and the unvaccinated as the biggest threat to America, even more than the Taliban. So in this survey, I asked people about a whole series of things, about eight different groups that might be something to be afraid of. Um, and I asked whether each was a serious threat, a modest threat or no threat at all. And for Democrats, 57 percent said that Trump supporters are a serious threat to the nation. Fifty six percent said the unvaccinated are a serious threat. And you're right. That showed they're more concerned about that than the Taliban or China or Russia. Um, when I flip it and look at the Republican responses, uh, what you see uh, is the Taliban, China and defund the police activists are written at the t are the top three and independents feel the same way. Scott, you and I have talked about this before. Our nation has become more and more polarized. We've become more divided. That trend appears to be continuing, in fact, even intensifying. I, I think you are right. It's, it's certainly intensifying. Um, and you and I are both old enough to remember 1968 when it was a really bad year for our nation. Um, I think we're getting to some of that, that same kind of a dynamic again. Um, what we're seeing, though, is I think a little bit different on both sides, on the opposite sides of the partisan aisle. Uh, Democrats are identifying Trump supporters, people who support the president, the 74 million voters who cast their ballots for him as a serious threat to the nation. Uh, strategically and politically, that's a mistake because you'll never win over people if you're telling them that they're the biggest threat to the nation. Uh, Republicans, when they look at to fund the police activists, Obviously, that's something a lot of Republicans associate with the Democratic Party, but it is not as blanket uh, an accusation. And I, I suspect that what we're seeing is a lot of Democratic leaders are talking about the events of January 6th and some other challenges, uh, and they're assuming that all Trump supporters support those activities, uh, and it's simply not the case. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to just kind of connect the dots here. Uh, take, for instance, the fear of the unvaccinated. When for the last almost two years now, at least a year and a half, we've had the media just pounding this issue of the coronavirus, scaring everybody to death. And of course, you've got, uh, you know, the, the, the political class, many of them, you got to have the mask, you got to be, I mean, the, the fear. So, it would be natural then if this thing, and I'm not minimizing, I know the COVID, the COVID virus is serious, uh, but, you know, we have more people dying of uh, heart disease than we do of the COVID, um, but we're not scaring people out of uh, their bad eating habits. But that's being translated to then, if this COVID is so bad and we've got to be so fearful, then those who are not vaccinated are the ones to fear. Right. And, you know, what puzzles me a bit about that is all of the data that we have, not polling data, all of the, the data on the impact of the pandemic and COVID suggests that at this point in time, the people who are being affected the worst, the ones who are dying because of COVID still, the ones who are getting bad cases, they are the unvaccinated. So it, it, it is a threat to some people, but there's very little evidence to say that there's actually, that somebody not being vaccinated is a threat to a person who has been vaccinated 
or probably to a person who has had the vaccine, as, uh, who's actually had COVID as well and built up some natural immunity. It is a sense of fear, and I think you're right about that. It, it pops through in all the data. Uh, what is one of the fear factors, and there's a difference of opinion on this, is what do you think happens to you if you get COVID? Now, when the pandemic first came out and first just gripped the nation, people treated it like it was a death sentence. And mm -hmm. for many, it was in those early days. Now, Republicans and independents tend to say, if I get it, I'll get over it pretty quickly. Democrats are still more fearful that it'll have a harmful effect on them. When you look uh, last week when the president issued his mandate saying that, uh, and, and I go back to, to what you said, he said in his speech that this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. But yet at the same time, there's still this stoking of fear among those who are vaccinated that these people are putting you at risk when, as you said, the science shows that if you're, if you're in the hospital, it's probably because you weren't vaccinated. So you're bringing this on yourself. If you want to do that, that's fine. It's your business. Um, but when you look across the board, how has America responded to the president's mandate on the vaccine? Well, we're in the field getting specific responses about the mandate itself and, and different alternatives. And one thing I will say, um, there's a lot more nuance to people's perspective on this uh, than we want to talk about. I mean, a lot of people say they support the mandate, but six out of 10 are quite comfortable going into a restaurant without a mask, without knowing if everybody's vaccinated. So in our personal lives, we're acting one way. Um, but politically, there's a different impact. One of the things that I do to track the impact of an event is measure what it does to voter intensity about the next election and does it shift anything politically. What we saw following the president's speech and the announcement of these mandates is voter enthusiasm about the midterm elections went up about five points, but it went up across the board. Uh, Republicans, Democrats, independents, everybody's more fired up. It's truly a case of a rising tide lifting all boats. Uh, what that means is the most fired up part of the population so far remains people who support the policies of President Donald Trump. Uh, they're the ones who are most anxious to get to the polls and cast their ballot. Now, how they will vote? Well, before the president's speech, the generic ballot in my polling was tied, 40 percent Republican, 40 percent Democrat. After the polling or after the speech, still tied 40 to 40. So no change among registered voters, among the motivated voters, those most likely to vote. Republicans continue to have a modest advantage. So again, what we see is intensity on both sides. But right. what we see, though, is is clearly a more divided country. Um, and finding that middle ground is becoming more and more difficult. And I think the one thing President Trump did, and I think Barack Obama did this as well, understood that these elections are base elections. And right. as you said, the, uh, the president's base who supports big government and the overreach, they're all excited about it. Uh, those on the other side, the other half of America who are skeptical of government and these mandates are energized as well. Right. You know, I, I mentioned 1968 earlier because that was a really difficult year in our country. You know, different, different issues than we're facing today, but a real struggle. Uh, and Aaron Waldowski, a great political scientist, wrote at that time that there's a simple recipe for violence. That is, promise people a lot and do nothing. Um, and what he noted was that when political, when, when you begin to get into this political divide, politicians have to make bigger and bigger and stronger promises to get out their base, mm -hmm. but they don't have the ability to deliver. So the president gets elected from either side, their voters are disappointed, and the other side is fired up at what they're trying. And I think that's where we are right now. We have to be very careful that it doesn't lead to a more serious situation. We need some people who will begin to take a step back from the brink. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Scott Rasmussen, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day.